Uh, what's up, y'all? Back with another one. Is Anthony Moore here? Uh, Asante Morris. Hello, uh, all you listeners and watchers. And if you're watching this, you see I got Pepsi on the side of me. I got my man Max back in the building. Yeah, yeah. round of Damn. applause for Max. Yeah, hold for applause. I was, I was thinking we got, we might have to get you a microphone, even though you on the side. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we back with another one, man. I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the We Want More podcast. We on episode nine. Episode nine, things is moving right along, man. How you feeling? Uh, I feel like pretty. I'm actually, I don't know. I'm very hyper aware of everything right now. I like was hungover earlier and got some caffeine in me, and I'm just oh. very. Oh, I'm overly aware of everything. I'm I'm feeling great though. I feel like amazing. Had a good night. Uh, it was all right. It was all right. Yeah, man. I'm I'm feeling good, man. I, I started my day. I got my errands in. Ran the marshals. Got a pedicure. See, yeah. that's the kind of morning I should have had. Yeah, I got a nice, nice little Sunday vibe. I'm out here living like my mom. Got my errands done. That's why women live longer than men, because they do stuff like that. Yeah, you need that. You need that. And, but getting that pedicure, it definitely, um, getting a pedicure, I definitely want to take some Mandarin lessons. Or just learn, like, small little phrases. Because the lady, she kept telling me, she kept telling me, oh, rough. rough. Like, I understood that. She kept mentioning my calluses and stuff like that. And then she would say something to the guy next to her. It's like, come on, don't don't speak in no language that I can't understand next to me. Yeah, I I feel like Cause I'm a That's rude. I, I gotta assume you talking shit. Yeah, and I, I I don't got no problem with somebody saying uh, you know, whatever their yeah. language is in front of me, but like Right. You just you gonna go from mentioning me in English and then say something in another language. You talking shit, right? I rather you just saying English. Damn these feet rough. <laughs> like just keep it all the way real. But other than that, man, my morning has been pretty good. Things been going good, man. I can't complain. Oh, matter of fact, and before I go any further, please be sure to like, subscribe, follow on all social um on all on all platforms wherever you listen to this at. Um, be sure to give us five stars on everything. Yeah, like, subscribe, follow, five stars. Is there any other way? Share it. Yeah, share it. Tell tell a friend. Tell tell whoever you listen. Like whoever yeah, you hang. Screenshot with, all of that. Shit. I, I was one thing I want. I want to do. I want to because I want this to be more interactive with the people that do listen. So I was thinking about like setting up like a Discord or something, just so that way we could actually know who we talking to and. You know the the listeners they might want to have they might want to hear certain things specifically. Might so if it is a topic or just anything you want to know, whether it be about us or our opinion, just about anything. I mean, feel free to shoot it at us. I don't got no opinions. Everything I say is facts. So I don't know about you, but <laughs> I've never lied on this podcast once. Okay, well, talk your shit. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just got sassy as hell for no reason. <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, since we last spoke, um, since we last spoke, I forgot. Well, we kind of talk, kind of touched on it briefly, but I wanted to like. Were you talking about a conversation we had, or like just something we mentioned on the pod before? Um, well, a conversation we had, um, just about because since we last spoke, I I gave a recap of my helium show, but I really didn't go in depth. On certain parts And Like for example Yeah document this That was a big night for you You know Put it on the uh, You know This will be your journal entry Yeah So One of the things that I and I, and I was trying to Kind of down, downplay it Until it actually happened But one of the things That I really appreciated Was just One of my friends That I went to school with I went to Went to high school And college with her She had asked me like, we was just catching up. We haven't spoken in a long time. And she was just asking me after the show. She was like, yo, what, what have you learned from your journey in comedy? And I really appreciated that question just because pe- when people ask me about comedy, it's usually, you know, the, the typical question. Yeah, what's your top five, uh, um, you know, what your tell me a joke. Or what's your favorite joke that you've told? Yeah, or like, what? or. What what do you do when people don't laugh? Stuff like that. But do you ever somebody, get scared? But to hear somebody say, "What have you learned from comedy?" That was like really cool, and it made me just think about all the things I've learned. 
Um, I learned a lot, man. I learned I learned how to adapt. I learned how to be flexible in any situation, not just with comedy, but I mean with just life. Whether it be you know like when you're on a road, you on a road somewhere, flight get delayed, or you got to figure out, damn, how I'm gonna get to this show on time. Cause I remember, I'll never forget. I remember when I first started doing colleges. I had a college in the Midwest in Missouri, and where it was at in Missouri. It was like a two, three hour drive from the closest airport. So my flight had got delayed. And basically the way it was, if I if I flew into that airport, I wasn't gonna make the show on time. And I'm I'm talking to the guy, I was like, yo, is there any way you could push this show back? Like can you push it back like a, a hour or two? And he was like, No, this is it's been promoted for months now. Like this is the set time. So I just had to figure out I'm like, damn. So then I had to switch to a whole nother airport. You had to parachute out the plane? <laughs> Damn there. That's what it was like. I had to switch to a whole nother airport. I had to. Oh, wait. So you didn't even get on the plane yet. Like it, it, you like, were at like, the airport. No, no. So my original flight. So I had I had, I had a layover. Layover. At, yeah, I had a okay. layover in, in Chicago. So my, my first flight was delayed, which made me miss my connecting flight. Right. And that shit just threw off my whole schedule. So I had to fly to a completely different airport. I had to rent a car in the middle of the night and do all this extra shit. But I ended up getting to that show on time. Ended up getting to the show on time. Show went great. But then I had an early flight back the next morning. Because I wasn't... My original flight back was at an airport close. But then the switch just messed up my whole plans. So I drive to the airport and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just stay up through the night. I'm gonna just watch some movies. That's when I found out, you know, certain airports like when you when you're not in a major city, airports close at a certain time. I never thought about that, but I mean, Bro, wait, why? That doesn't even make any sense. Because a lot of these airports, like when you're in the Midwest, a lot of these airports they might only have like six or seven flights a day. So, mm. so I mean, yeah, I guess that makes sense. The others like you can get here at a certain time. Yeah, so I get to this airport, I get to this airport, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to just get there at midnight, I'm going to just get there at midnight and just stay up and just watch movies, because my flight, it boards at like 5.30 in the morning. I get there, airport closed at 10, so now I'm just sitting in the parking lot in the middle of nowhere in this rental. That shit was scary, that shit was terrifying, just because the region I was in. I'm like, I'm, where, I'm, where do you remember what state this was? Yeah, it was in Illinois. Illinois. Oh yeah, you said Chicago. Illinois. It was in Illinois, but the part of Illinois. Once you get out, that's of like Chicago, cornfield. That's like cornfield territory, right? Bro, it's all cornfield, but but they don't tell you like when you just hear about Illinois, you just think about Chicago, you just think about drills. <laughs> but that's just, that's true. I can't think of any deep dish pizza and gunshots. That's all I can think about. Yeah, and they and they call soda pop. But other than that, yeah, that was one thing I, I learned. I had to learn how to adapt. What else did I have to learn? Um, you definitely learn. Well, first thing you learn is to just look at the world <laughs> in a very specific uh, way. You know, like you're kind of always looking for what are we not, what are we not thinking about when we when we're talking about this? You know, yeah. you see something happen, and you go, "All right, wh- where where are we? What are we missing here?" Right, and that was another thing that I, I've learned. Yeah, to be a comedian, you have to have that like. We're missing something. That that's another thing. I'm glad you said that because I learned to just be okay with my thoughts. Like to be alone by myself and just be alone just Yeah, you gotta yeah. what I do now, I don't know, I where I think I just read this on the internet and it just kind of clicked. They were like every day, mm-hmm. at least ten minutes, just sit there in silence. Just sit somewhere, silence, no phone, nothing, just sit there. Not when you're about to go to sleep, because that's a different type of, you know, your mind's racing for, like, different reasons and whatnot. But just right. while you're fully awake, right. you sit there and think. Yes. That type of stuff is cool. Yeah, so that's what I, I learned how to be alone with my thoughts. I learned how to be more independent and more confident in my voice. Because I remember early on, when I used to send emails to clubs, I wouldn't even be the one to type it. I would ask my girl, yo, can you, can you type up something for me real quick? Like, because, you know, men, we tend to just, we t- we tend to sometimes be more dependent and not confident, especially, like, if you grow up in a certain area where it's, like, you feel like your voice not being heard or you just don't get that. Um, I'm Yeah, I don't want to 
come off uh, unprofessional in professional settings. Right. Just because, like, Philadelphians, we don't speak professionally. Even this isn't a race thing or any, like, class. Like, just nobody in Philadelphia speaks proper English. So just coming from that environment. Right. I'm just starting off emails. Yo, bull. Yeah. <laughs> hey. hey, yo, y'all got any spots on there during the night? But so that was that was one thing. I had to learn how to be more confident in my voice and um and just stand stand on my own when it when it came to certain things. And just all of these things, it just helped me out so much. Not just in comedy, but just in life. Yeah. I definitely I definitely learn a lot of stuff. I mean I will say that a lot of the lessons that I've learned in comedy, I kind of already encroached upon just mm-hmm. from growing up skating my whole life. And also, you know what else? You got to be okay with failure. Yeah, you definitely had to be okay with failure. Like, Failing. think about how long it takes to to make a joke work. Right. And think about how long it takes. All right, if you see anybody post a video of them skateboarding, it might look really cool. But it might have taken them a hundred tries to do that one thing, and it's like a three second clip. Right, same thing. But um, like you said, like with, with jokes, a lot of people they only see the finished product. They don't see like, for example, that show at Helium. That show at Helium for me, that was what over ten years in the making for me to get to that point. Ten and years for sixty minutes of solid material. Right, you learn you learn to appreciate things. Come on, boy. This damn dog. Well, <laughs> welcome to the podcast, uh, Pepsi. Pepsi. He has <laughs> something he'd like to say, I guess. As long as long as he just chills, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I think he's just going to burrow a little bit. Just sit there and chill. Yeah, he's trying to wonder. Which is- uh, I've, I've begun to accept that comedy is art. I've been trying to like avoid saying that it's art because it's just, you know, you go up there and you talk about how your balls stink. When it's hot outside, you know, that's not totally art. But it, I, I think it is. You know, it really is. It's a craft. And uh, if you go to a museum and then you go home and you look at the museum's website, and almost every piece or exhibit in that museum, there might be a photo of it but online. The, no, comedy is definitely art because... But you got to see it in person to actually get it. You can't just yeah. look at paintings online yeah. and feel it. Yeah, it's funny that this city is really just designed to swallow you whole. It is, and that matter of fact, that I'm glad you said that because that's another point. Comedy has taught me to stop complaining because I used to complain a lot. I used to complain a lot, and it's a few. It was it was a few key moments that made me stop complaining. I remember one. I'm in Philly performing at Helium Comedy Club years ago. This was might might have been like 2014, 2013. I'm doing. I'm trying to get a guest spot on DC Curry show. Now DC Curry, he was Uncle Elroy and Next Friday. He's headlining and I knew his opener. So I just asked like, hey, is there any way you could ask um DC Curry if I could do a guest spot? And and DC he was like he he let me go up, but he was like, yo, he was like, Do you do you work this club? And and me I'm complaining like, oh, no, they don't really give young comedians a chance and all of this. Like, just going on this long spill. And he was like, I ain't asked to hear all that. Like, I ain't asked to hear you complain. And at first, I thought he was trying to play me. But then when I really thought about it, it's like, I'm complaining about shit he had to go through. Yeah, he's like, do you want me to find a solution to your problem for you? You know, like, that's, men, we don't really want to hear each other's problems if there's no solution attached. But not even just that. It's like, this shit's supposed to be hurt. No, but with the whole complaining thing. So that that happened. And then it was another time, you know, this was. <laughs> this, Dude, this dog. He just wants some attention. I know, so I know. This is the, this is the, the good thing about this is all the dog lovers out there are going to love this. This is a dog lover uh, podcast. You do realize that, right? It really is. Yeah. But All right, that's enough. But another thing, when I was complaining this was this was actually might have been not too long ago. This was might have been like a year and a half, two years ago. And I remember I'm complaining. I was talking to this comic, like might have been like a, a a younger comic, or not even just a younger comic, just somebody on the scene that's just still still figuring out the whole comedy scene. And so we talking. He asked me how I was doing. I was like, man, I'm tired of shit, man. I got. I got five spots tonight, and I don't even feel like going. 
And I said this to somebody that didn't have a spot at all that night. Yeah, you be saying <laughs> shit. You be saying shit like that to me sometimes too. Like, you know, I'm trying to fill up my schedule. You like, damn, I gotta go over here, but at least I'm gonna get paid. I got over here too. Oh, I gotta get paid over there. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, yo, let me shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> before, before like a group of a group of comics robbed me or something. It's like a white person complaining about needing to get their yacht repaired. You know. So like a, a a fucking brown person, like oh, I gotta take my yacht to the shop. Yeah, is there yacht shops? Who fix? How do you fix a yacht? Like a guy just comes on it, right? That's scary though. Like yeah. to to fix a boat, you gotta go on the water. But if yeah. it's a broken boat, you could you could drown, can't you? <laughs> Am I stupid? <laughs> Fuck yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> you ever just think about that? Like yo, I think I might be stupid, man. Like you ever, you ever just sit there and think like I'm not a smart person. I'm a dumb nigga. <laughs> Like I'm just a dumb nigga that thinks a lot and reads. I yeah. read and I think, but I'm stupid and a motherfucker. No, no, but um, I should speaking of stupid. <laughs> that's what I wanted to t- talk about today. Sexy Red speaking to the kids. That that is a choice. Having Sexy Red at a school is crazy. At a high school, first of all, Sexy Red performing at a high school is wild. Sexy Red performing at a college is wild. At first, I was like. This is a college. I was watching a video. All right, for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, because we kind of just jumped into this. Sexy Red, the rapper, Pound Town, Ski, all that shit. Uh, she took her her, uh, her female empowerment to a high school. Yeah. And there's a video of her performing Pound Town at a high school. But what's funny about the video, did you see the entrance? She, yeah, she just walked in. She walked in. <laughs> she walked in. Um, so the gym. No, they threw threw up a gang sign, gave the kids <laughs> gave the kids the finger. She did that. Yeah, I did not see that. That's hilarious though. Like, kids are assholes though. They deserve the finger. Yeah. Wait, it's um sexy red with yeah. with two D's. Yeah, Se- sexy red with two D's. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's gonna be. It might be hard to find because it just like the video just kind of came out. Yeah. But it is. It is just crazy because at first I thought it might be a college. And I'm like, okay, that's not really something good for a college, but you know that can make sense. But who the fuck would okay that at a high school, bro? I would have put pulled my child out that school so fast. I mean, salute to sexy real. I definitely support her. I support her. I and- don't. <laughs> I don't do. I don't support that. You're an adult. You should know that. Like, no. You know. I mean, outside of the school, I support the whole. Like, what is what she say? Cause, cause her, you can't, you can't th- do nothing gay around kids. You can't do nothing like socialistic. You know, you can't be preaching capital, uh, critical race theory, bro. These kids, these kids can't read Malcolm X, but yeah. they can hear Coochie Pink, Booty Hole Brown. Exactly, like you can't a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, fucking a uh, a uh, uh, a trans woman can't read a book at a Barnes and Noble or some shit to a bunch of kids. A trans woman can't read Green Eggs and Ham. Yeah, yeah, and that's they're, they're trying to convert us. But she is talking about. I mean, Pound Town. The opening line is kind of just uh, sex ed. You know, my what? pussy's pink, my booty hole's brown. <laughs> so kids do need to know that boys have a penis and girls have a vagina, and it's pink, and we all have buttholes, and ours are brown. I don't know. I actually, I've never seen my butthole, so I, I assume it's brown. <laughs> but you know, past that point. <laughs> It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty foul. The lyrics are pretty foul after that point. So, so you you think it's cool that she went to to the high school? No, I don't think it's cool at all. I don't, I don't think it's cool. Um, I wanna I wanna. I think she went to that school, but even then, with her going to that school, just just talk about. <laughs> just, just show up with stuff. the stuff. Yeah, just show up. Hey, <laughs> hey, kids! I followed my dreams, and I would stay true to myself. And you could do it too, so long as you work as hard as I did. That is way better than a song. Yeah. Even if it, it's complete bullshit, <laughs> because like, she didn't get there just by being herself. She got there by selling uh, sex to a sex crazed society. But this is why children can't be the future. We gotta like, you know how they they worry about um, children aren't the future anymore. They worry about. If, it's if, not the children's fight fault. No, it's, I mean it's not. It's but they worry about if social security is going to still be around or if global warming is going to like ruin the planet before 
this generation gets um gets of age. It's like this is why we we probably just need to let it happen. These kids, these kids don't stand the chance. We like if your child was at that school, what would you do? If my child was at that school, I'm probably don't have the financial resources to take them to a better school. So I'm just probably gonna sit there and take it. I mean, honestly. <laughs> Them niggas would be in charter school if they could be. <laughs> and that's just honestly a terrible endorsement of the kind of school that no, you got. No, but it's like if you want to get out of this 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 city, you have got to sell <laughs> pussy. Or at least talk about it. No, but it's funny because you kind of know how like where your school is at depending on the alumni. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, hey, <laughs> Like who who famous made it out of here? If you think you're gonna get anywhere with your titties inside of your shirt, think again, bitch. Get naked and dance for some money. Uh they were sucking dick on the back. <laughs> 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 they were sucking dick on the back. <laughs> Look at this. Oh yeah, this is the video. She looked like she's still in high school. She's Look, small. She gave these niggas the finger and threw up gang signs. Yeah, that's so crazy. And then, and then is prom season, is prom season. But they all in there with hoodies on. Yo, <laughs> what school do they let you wear a, a Nike ski mask? <laughs> I wasn't allowed to wear a hat in school, bro. Which I thought was racist because white girls could wear their beanies. You know how white girls wear the beanie when their hair looks like shit, bro. We couldn't have facial hair. What? I couldn't have facial hair in high school. Like, yeah, that, that's what I'm, that's what's crazy in Philly. We born with facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't grow a beard though. Right. I can't relate. The, the, the chicks in my class have, have Sunnis. And <laughs> the girls in my class have facial we couldn't we couldn't have a goatee. We couldn't have a goatee. And then but now they letting these kids these niggas are sitting in geometry with poo shiesties on. It's, it's crazy. The kind of stuff I would have been doing in the halls of school if I could wear a mask, it's just, it, you know, I don't even want to talk about it. I, w- I was I was a dumb kid. I'm a dumb adult. I'm a dumb adult, but I was a dumb kid. I wouldn't have done anything like fucked up. I would just been doing dumb shit like pranking people. Yeah. I'm glad that the internet pranks weren't as big as they were. Like, same, same. Like, anybody could do it now. And like, it's too our, much. Prank, our pranks in high school was just. Like you might flip somebody book bag inside out and throw like a bunch of stuff in it. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, that that used to be funny as shit. Though. <laughs> when you would come to your book bag and just flip this out. Yeah, or or they don't realize it until like the bell ring. And then they're trying to find the strap. They're like, what the fuck? Yeah. That shit was funny. That was such a harmless little prank, like, you know, that type of stuff. But now they they like, hey, I just nutted inside of your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Raising my child. Isn't that funny? You've been raising my child. That's they're just like too dark. Like you ever see the ones where they could just get really aggressive with somebody? Yeah. <laughs> they just like get really like angry at somebody and they like pretend they like they want to fight them. Yeah. It's just like that's not a prank. You're just filming yourself uh being insane. Every day I meet more people that prove Dr. Umar right when he said some some of these kids got to go to sleep for good. For good, for good, <laughs> cause he can't. Yo, we, it sound messed up. It sound messed up, but he was on point. Like, so this past week, well, matter of fact, I think this was yesterday. This was yesterday. They, I, I got a citizen. I still get citizens app alerts from Philly, so I got an alert where it said it was like two hundred kids gathering along like around Germantown Avenue, jumping on police cars and everything. Two hundred kids. Now that's why Dr. Umar said I can't psycho I can't psychologize all these kids on the corner. Nah, let's put them in a gas chamber or something. <laughs> let's just put let's just set up a fake hookah lounge <laughs> for all these eighteen year olds to go to, and then send them all to Siberia. It's like they walk into the door and it's actually the back of a semi truck. They like, just get shipped to it's Siberia. It's like you got to do it. You got to trick them like um, you got to tr- trick them like the Road Runner. You got to paint. You gotta paint like a Foot Locker, or <laughs> you you gotta paint like a a Foot Locker, or 
Or what the fuck do you, What do kids go to Snipes <laughs> Yeah <laughs> You got a paint of Snipes You got a paint of Snipes And a Chick-fil-A And then once <laughs> Once they get inside It's just a cage <laughs> I think you should go to sleep for good. <laughs> oh, that is terrible. I'm oh, terrible. It's, it's fucked up because I got a, I got a, right? I got a, a, a teenage sister. There's, there's man. some of the kids are good. Some of the matter of fact, it's 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 two extremes. It's either the kids are just super wild. The kids are just either super wild or they're just. S- just too aware. Like, I don't think we need to walk this back. Kids are the one group it's okay to discriminate against. Like, I would never get on here and talk about killing any group of people. <laughs> but I really promote throwing rocks at children. <laughs> Why not? No, cause ki- <laughs> Builds character. Because I say, I say it's, it's either like one side of the coin. There's no, it's no middle ground with kids. Because you either got, you either got um, like the 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 kids that's in the streets, the kids that's in the streets masked up, or you got the kids that's like like when I took my sister to that Tyler the Creator concert, mm-hmm. like those kids, like the the Euphoria kids, where they just they they just super weird, super in their feelings. Just to, oh, so they're either dangerous or annoying, is what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think there's. Well, I mean, I, I. Here's how I know about what kids are like. I'm trying. I'm trying to say that I'm sometimes I'm around kids. Why? Because like I'll go to skate parks and oh, shit. Okay. All right, all right. And like I, I when I was younger, when oh. I was like 15, I used to skate with people that were like way older than me. But okay. these days, I don't skate with younger kids. I don't I really will, like being around them. No, I will say that it, it was actually this nice wholesome video. I think it was the skate park around Avenue A. Actually, oh uh, yeah, I know what you you're talking video about. Yeah, where the where the older dude helped the little kid like land a, a, a trick. Yeah, he like pulled it. He because he like. So his legs are like small and it's hard to get like speed, I guess. Right. But honestly, it was just looked like fun. He he could have got the speed himself. He just did it for fun. But he he just like pulled him and then he went into the trick. Like yeah, that's how, um, that's how it used to be. I don't know. I'm not from here, so me interacting with the kids here it just is. I don't I don't do it. Yeah. But I remember I used to always try to teach the kids around my neighborhood like to skate at the skate park or like give them, but, you know, encouragement. But and stuff. yeah, that was like a, a like a, a a cool occurrence to see. Because I, I'm sure yeah. now, I'm sure now, like same thing. Like go to Philly, skateboard like a 16 year old skateboard up an 18 year old laying the trick. Then he just break the board over his head. I um, do a lot of things with people that I hate, like comedians. I hate <laughs> comedians. I hate skateboarders. I, I, all of my friends are those people. But you just those are some things that you just somehow brings out the worst in some people. Yeah, I know. I'm the. Like I be having to mentally prepare myself. Like I need to see the videos like this, where it's like a, a guy helping a kid and being nice to him. Yeah, I love like wholesome shit like this. And the only reason I know, cause you know I don't skateboard, but only reason I know, I just I literally just walked by that area a few days ago. But that was just so so cool, cause especially like a child at his age, that's just pure. Like he's just like that's pure excitement. Yeah, stuff it's like great. that. Yeah, I love seeing that. Before we go further, I wanted to say along the lines of like seeing videos that seeing videos that that make me happy. I saw this video earlier. It's a old. I think the video is from last year. Actually, it was this guy. I forget what country he was in, but some homeless guy was cel- celebrating his dog's birthdays. A homeless like, guy was celebrating his like his like his homie dog or like a, no his, no both of his like dogs. a like a oh like like dogs like yeah yeah. Like the like, animal, like, not yeah, like the, the term of endearment. Okay. Yeah. He was sitting on the step and he had put birthday hats. He put birthday hats on both of his dogs. He lit he like lit the lit the candles on the cake and then he cut up the cake and gave it to his dogs. And that shit had me bro, <laughs> that shit had me tearing up. That had me mo- that, now that I have a dog, I kinda understand um how messed up it is to take a dog away from a homeless person. 
I've seen I've seen that yeah. a video of, or just I guess like news articles of people doing that, and that's insane. Especially because that dog don't know he homeless. Yeah, he just dogs happy to be with his his person. As long as you can feed him and uh, make sure he stays out of harm's way, like a homeless person shouldn't have that dog taken from them. Does that happen a lot? You think? Yeah, that, that sucks, happened. man. Like, that what happened. what else is he gonna do besides hang out with his dog? Yeah, that happens a lot, man. Yeah, like who's this say dogs you be like brushing your dog's teeth, like they don't need all that. Just they just need food, water, bro, and companionship. It's a, a homeless it's, dude could do that. Uh, it's hilarious that you say that. Cause look at us. Wait. Look at the, look at the, this picture. Yeah, <laughs> like you be brushing his teeth. He like yeah. he be looking at you like <laughs> I'm I, I'm giving my dog Listerine. Yeah. <laughs> telling it, him to gargle. Dogs be living better than people, man. Especially homeless which is fucked up. It's like the in some way, the dog, you know, if you have no home and nowhere to go, that dog will make you feel more human. No, it, I mean, dogs do look, live better than people, but I try not to blame them because they can't get jobs. But like, dogs? Yeah. So, uh, like, for example. Yeah, it's you know, like having a kid with, like, uh, I'm not going to say a specific illness, or, but like a mental illness and he can't do anything. Or it's like, it's like having a parent where it's like you got a Bentley where you just you just flexing, you in a club, you popping bottles, you, ma- you making a rain on strippers, and like you got the money to retire your parents, but you just haven't yet. <laughs> it's like nigga, you have fifty years to grind. Oh yeah, yeah. When you see like like, like a uh, rapper's mom's house, he's just like, God damn! <laughs> right, she you bought your girlfriend an ass, and your mother has a hole in her roof. <laughs> <laughs> like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I saw um speaking of homeless people, I saw I saw a dude. I don't like to say whether or not somebody's like a crackhead cuz I don't know their life. No. Nah. But he's definitely on drugs. I was, and he was walking around like First of all, his body I'll say it cuz like, he had like a like a fit like boxer's body. I'm like, "What are you like, why am I doing all this work in the gym? Why don't I just sell my <laughs> fucking possessions and just live on the street? But he was walking around barefoot and, like, picking up shit with his feet. He was, he was acting like a monkey. Like, I don't know what he smoked, but, it, like, he smoked some, like, shit that, like, reversed ev- evolution. <laughs> like, he went back a couple steps on the evolution chart. And he was just, like, doing backflips and, like, cartwheels and shit. This is, it was crazy. Yeah, crackheads don't die. They multiply. <laughs> They do. They multiply, and then they just break into your apartment. You gotta leave. You gotta. You gotta leave. Uh, depending on where you're at, you gotta leave your um, your doors unlocked in your car, <coughs> so they don't just just break the window. Like they'll just open the door. No, but that's what you gotta appreciate about crack kids because they'll. It's weird. Crack kids, they'll break your window. But if it's already broken, it's a plastic bag on it. On it, it's like you gotta. That's what you gotta do. You gotta break your own window. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta break your own window and put a black plastic bag in it, so they won't break in. <laughs> that shit is that shit is so wow. How a target bag is actually safer than a car alarm. Car alarms don't do shit. Like when's the last time somebody heard a car alarm and went? Out to investigate it like right. you, you always just like Jesus fucking Christ Like can we Figure that shit out Especially living in New York yeah. Like I, I would hear Car alarms at night And I, I had a car And I'd be like I hope that's not my car Out there yeah. But if it is Fuck it What am I gonna go Look for the fucking Source of the noise Like if I can't see it Outside my window I don't give a shit I just want it to stop yeah. Let me see Nah I guess we can get Into the movie Yeah, 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 we can. All right, let's get into it, man. We back with another one of Tubi movie of the week. This week we watch He Played Me. We put we decided to choose this one because which movie did we watch last week? So the last movie that we watched was Uh, um, also a is it Lisa Brown? Yeah, yeah. Her name is Lisa Brown. She directed the last movie. Matter of fact, let me just look it up real quick. Just I'm a hundred percent. We watched the Dirty D. Okay, show. Yeah, 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 yeah. We watched the Dirty D. And Lisa Brown, one. she's di- she directed that, right? I think so. Yeah, she directed that, and she's also 
directing she also directed um <clears throat> this movie he played me which is based on her life which is based on her life story and she wrote a book about it and the book was successful on the amazon's bestsellers l- list which tells me that y'all readers y'all need <sighs> this is why this is why the illiteracy rate is so high let me see it says he played me based on her life Gonna spend twenty weeks on the Amazon's bestseller list. We gotta write a book, yo. Yeah, honestly, all right. Um, cause like I mean, much like much respect and definitely wish you nothing but success. Oh snap! Matter of fact, before I, I was about to start talking, she she wrote these men for everybody. Yeah, she's she's uh okay. did like all the good ones really. Okay. Not all the good ones, but she's done a couple good ones. A uh, couple good ones, a couple bad ones. About yeah, this movie specifically, He Played Me. Like, okay. it's based on her life. She basically, she too be Woody Allen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, because you, you, you going to have some misses, I guess. You gonna have some I mean, hits. Woody Allen doesn't really have any misses. It's just that he uh, is Woody Allen. <laughs> he just, yeah. You know, like, his, like, his work is great. His play is bad. It, it's just his life. Yeah, his life. His <laughs> life is the problem. Yeah, but no, the, um, this movie he. But her, her life, I guess, was a problem too. Yeah, she was the problem. Yeah, that was the thing. I thought that was an interesting choice in the movie because obviously it's not a hundred percent accurate to her whole life. Like she created drama and all this. But in this movie, you got a little bit of everything. You got, you got. I mean, you got a whole lot of you got dumbass shit. You got shootouts. You got um bad relationships. You got some. Shit, you got some LGBT love in her, cause she she was dating one of her. She was dating the chick. Yeah, yeah. There's there's there like I think there's like a queer sex scene. I guess we could call it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna play, I could call it a sex yeah, scene. They bonded over their trauma. I'm gonna play this scene real quick. This is the main character Yasmin. This is supposed to be the one that that's living out Lisa's story. Yeah, and she's such a fucking moron <laughs> that it's just it's just like. That's such a choice to make about a movie about your whole life. To but, like not try to make the main character cool. Because men do that all the time. But I will say, and one thing you pointed out to me is that this is one of the first two movies we watch where it wasn't a BBO. Yeah, all the like I think the, the, all the asses was uh God given in this movie. Yeah, this was um this was uh this was a, a pre BBL production. Yeah, so that that was notable. That was that was something a big difference. Did you like did you like the movie? Nah. It was not, matter of fact, I'm not gonna say I didn't like the movie. I didn't like the movie. I'll but say that. <laughs> I'll say I didn't like it. I don't think I, they was, just is I understand that she was like made mistakes. It was kinda all over the place. And she's an unlikable character. The main character is just there's just nothing you just don't want anything good to happen for her. She doesn't <laughs> want anything good to happen for herself. It's just it's it's a uh, uh it's definitely oh, it's definitely um, worth watching if you're gonna be on Tubi watching movies, and you looking to support some black art. Yeah, yeah. If you want to support some black people, support a black a uh, black woman's um story. Definitely support this, and definitely support this, and watch this because I want to see the Tubi actors do good in life. I want to see them do better. I want to see them reach their goals, however big or small they are. I want them to reach for bigger goals for sure. Because I was going on, like, you know, I'm trying to figure out who these actors are. So, like, one of the guys that was in this movie um, was Camille Hassan. Camille Hassan. That was one of the actors whose names we were trying to figure out because he's definitely, he's in a lot of our favorites. Yeah, he's, he's like, uh, in he, a lot of them. And he actually has some range. Yeah, he, he, like, we've seen him play the good guy and the bad guy. That's that's range to you. <laughs> the two types of people. That, that's that that's as much as the range they gonna get. Yeah, on here, the drug dealer and the best friend. We seen him in a lot of movies. <laughs> drug dealer or the best friend. <laughs> we seen him in a lot of movies on here so far, and he's also in the Dirty D. But we were trying to figure out who he was because, as you see, a lot of these people don't even have a headshot up here. But yeah, Camille Hassan. He's in a lot of he's in a lot of stuff on Tubi. So I was just going, just going to the Instagrams just to check out to see, just to see what they do when they're not working, or just you know what what other work they're doing. So I looked up one of my favorite to be actresses. 
I'm looking at her page, and when, on her Instagram, she had like she had info saying like to book her, whether it be for a movie, whether it be for a movie, um, a, a party engagement, a bottle girl. Dance. <laughs> I'm trying to take her to Dubai. <laughs> Dance service. I DM'd right. her and asked her what her rates was. How much is it to pee on you? <laughs> <laughs> you just <laughs> support these Let's two. Let's go to a Muslim country and disrespect <laughs> the religion with our sex. <laughs> Bro, we got to help these two be actors because it's like they want to get their dreams out. They're trying to act, but they out here. <laughs> They get a book to get shitted on. <laughs> hey, damn. You can't use you can't use that P money to get some hair shots. Come on, man. I saw this one chick. I'm looking at her. Yeah, if you don't get golden showers, get some actual <laughs> gold out of it. Let me see. I'm about to pull up her page. She actually is one she actually is one of my favorites too though. No, she is. Like she's um I don't know what it is. One, for one, she has a uh, pretty uh, symmetrical BBL. Yeah, this this is a nice ass right here. And that's that's the that's just the hook though. That's just the thing that draws you draws yeah. you in. But and then she's actually like. Uh, but I'm looking at her her a schedule. decent actress. I'm looking at her her tour schedule, and like the tours that she's in, like the 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 city she's going to, um, she's going to be in Memphis, um, Columbia, South Carolina. East St. Louis. All off that ass, um, too. Pensacola, Florida. These are all places that have, like, filmed the episodes of the first 48. For <laughs> <laughs> like, we need to support these actors to get them on a safer tour. The places... Yeah, the we want <laughs> these people to be able to go to a town with a uh, Republican mayor. Because <laughs> the name of the places, one night, she's going to Moo Lounge. The next night... Elite Lounge. Um, she's going to some town in Mississippi. Paradise Lounge. First of all, any anybody going to a lounge, is nothing good coming from that. Like, is nothing. Yeah, niggas go <laughs> niggas go to a lounge to not lounge. They go they go to some relaxing shit to, <laughs> to get fuck into it some, up. To get into some trouble. <laughs> yeah. So support these two B actors, man. Because when I saw that, I'm like. Mm. Yo, yeah, niggas do not want to have they, they don't nobody want to relax. Like, all right, so yesterday I was at the uh show in the park at Herbert Von King, the um the summer stage mm-hmm. show. You know, um it's like the uh I guess it's like a festival they do all summer. They do like park shows and uh, you know, your girl No Name was there mm-hmm. and she was on stage doing her like poetry, like cool music, like calm shit. And right. I, it was a nigga argue with his girl because I guess she brought him there. <laughs> he like, He's like, I don't want to hear this jazz shit. I want to hear some drill. Like, right. He yelled that out. Right. It just like. It, F- fuck you trying to kick knowledge. <laughs> yeah. He's mad as fuck that she was trying to relax the neighborhood. I wonder if there's like a. Uh, if it's like hard to get because, I mean, it's hard to get typecast in Hollywood as one thing. <laughs> She's not even getting typecasted as like a character. She's just being like typecasted as like as a hoe. Yeah, that's like just like big booty. Like, is it hard to get out of the the big booty? Like, uh, once you got uh, it, is that's what category. Like, I wonder if if the BBLs. I get what you mean. She can only play characters with a big ass. She can play a stripper, a security guard, a, a bottle girl, a TSA agent. <laughs> just like only just only like a zookeeper just only like <laughs> jobs where your ass is fat like you'll never see her you'll never see her just in a movie just doing somebody taxes i i think we should though yeah, yeah. damn look at that it's a no like actress hold, 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 <laughs> hold the fuck up <laughs> this is why we got to support our two b actors actress Nail tech model dance. <laughs> She's single too. That's cool. This is this is her this is her uh her um business Facebook. Man, this bitch is robbed. Why is her relationship <laughs> status on there? But then I'll be thinking the tats is for the movie. No. Yeah, she's definitely getting typed. Damn. 
Yeah, and and you know, like yeah, she's she's ready to fuck up somebody's life with it with a chest head. That is the thing that's funny about Hollywood is because it's dying, and if some like really prominent <laughs> executives and shit and like writers and producers and directors were to put somebody that looks like her in like one of these well like a well written movie, that shit would actually work pretty well. Yeah. Cause there's not like you don't see uh is it is she naked in this picture? Yeah, that's her too. <laughs> Cause I I don't I don't know. I wonder where her price is. What was that? What was I getting at? Cause I saw a titty and then it just <laughs> threw my equilibrium off. Cause I want to book a I'm a book a to be actor, but it's gonna be like for some shit. Like I would love to book her, but not even just for like the dude. Not the dance. No, I want to. I want to see her act. No, in, like, <laughs> I'm a booker. I'm a booker to help me like just clean around here. I want to see her do like Hamlet. Like I want to see her do some very, <laughs> some very like here ye high and shit. <laughs> yeah, I want to see her on like fucking Downton Abbey. She should be on like fucking White Lotus. And look at the, wait. Okay, the audience choice award: Crystal the Doll, Kiva Albritton. That's some tough competition right there, me and Monroe. Bro, like, think about this. Because you know they get black people opportunities in Hollywood now. You know, there's a plenty of prominent yeah. black actors and actresses. and But they're not, Damn. they not, like, niggas. Like, like Crystal the Doll. This, this bitch sell everything. <laughs> she could do your nails, act in a movie, strip. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I'm I'm serious, dude. She's really got like a lot going on. Viola Davis could never. Like Vi- yeah, like imagine Viola Davis with a tattoo of a cherry on her titty. You can't. So she could be in if she were to be in a role that like Viola Davis would do. Like if she were to be uh she if she were to do fences like on, on Broadway. Who the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> she would do fences on Broadway Yo. and try to you know, <laughs> fences with a BBL is crazy because <laughs> she's just be uh, like yelling at uh, you know the scene where she's yelling at Denzel yeah. and she's like it's <laughs> like spitting everywhere she's like you think I'm not just like going crazy bro and it's just such a great performance she could do that but she never been given the opportunity I would love to see because she's too busy doing some like, like nails. <laughs> I would love to see that shit, man. A two B actor just like giving it all with snot bubbles, just acting their ass off. Now available for mm-hmm. okay. Like, how crazy yeah. would it be if like she gets booked by fucking like Tarantino? <laughs> what if Quentin Tarantino hits her up and all he does, hey. all he wants is his <laughs> nails done? <laughs> He's like, "Hey, you're the actress, right? Yeah, yeah. you do my nails." <laughs> Dude. Wait, hold the wait, hold up. Go back, go back. Is the picture next to that one? Click on the wait. The the wait, yeah, that one. <laughs> no, wait, no, wait. Go down though. No. This this bitch. They're not bitches anymore, I'm Anthony. Sorry, They're I'm, people now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They haven't no, been no, bit- no, no. I have to say, this bitch is doing bottle service with a, with a cast on. Yo, we, yeah, please, please, if y'all can support these 2B actors, man. I would love to see her in the Tarantino movie, though. Like, just something where he just, they don't even got to deal with the movie. It'd just be like a, a nice Western, but Tarantino just have her show her feet real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, her and Crystal the Dog could do, like, uh, like two partner cops, <laughs> right? Like they could be like cop partners, and one of them's corrupt, and the other one doesn't know, and one like betrays the other, but not in a Tubi way, <laughs> like in a in a way that the script. Yeah. I think I think I've said the same thing ninety times, but I'm just like, damn, they had a good script. Oh shit! Because B like like a BBL oh, really and a good script this. never never. Uh, I'm looking at her her Instagram. Her page. story is nine thousand notches. <laughs> right. Yeah. Damn, that's really, yo, but that's, 
It's, it's actually her birthday. Happy is actually um. Nigga, don't say it. I don't, don't give a fuck. I don't know her. <laughs> don't be digging. Say happy birthday to a nigga we never no, met. No, no, but I'm just looking at her story. It's amazing. It's it's really you gotta commend that she's made she's made seventy five movies and six TV shows all in the middle of dancing. All in the middle, like she's probably that's. That's why they shooting all these Tubi movies in one scene, <laughs> because <laughs> some nigga on the set making sure they get back to work. So we <laughs> we be thinking, <laughs> we think they written out these places. It's like no, the nigga actually worked there. <laughs> yeah, it's like they hurried up and snuck the the camera crew into the stripper locker room <laughs> while management was out. Yeah, like remember the girl from the one was it the movie? Yeah, where she goes, I popped the perky. <laughs> I popped the perky. She, she was actually a stripper. She was, just, she was she like, was, oh shit, is a camera here? She was actually her. Yeah, like, like she they, really popped the perky. Like they sneaked. She the, really popped the. They beanie. sneaked the camera crew in, and they had, they had one stripper watching the door while giving them dance. <laughs> yeah, somebody they they paid one of them to suck the owner's dick. <laughs> they just shacked them. They say, like, all right, you're gonna go in there, suck it for like 30 minutes, and then we'll do the scene, and everybody gets paid sixty five dollars. <laughs> Man, they ain't paying them; they're paying these actors exposure. <laughs> they paying them and and hookah. <laughs> they paying these they paying these two B actors and a hookah and an air shot. And. But it's definitely it's definitely making me want to see more of Detroit. I have to. I, I think. I think we might be. Um, <laughs> I think we might be the the ones that blow her up. I hope so, man. I think that if we uh, with our momentum behind her, she could make it to the top. Damn. You know what? She she probably she probably also does that thing. Um, on the TikTok, the NPC shit. She would that shit would do yeah. good if she were to do that. Yeah, I would. I would love to see that. I'd yeah, be, the, the, just her going gang, 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 <laughs> <laughs> gang, gang. I would love to see a Detroit, Detroit, Detroit. Um, I don't know ASMR or like the NPC shit on TikTok. That shit is huge now. Like every, it's like <laughs> everybody doing it now. A lot of people are doing it now. It's like I feel like I I could do it. You know. But I wonder with like say ice say ice cream so good and commit to it. Really do it. I'm gonna blackmail you. I'm gonna get you to do it on camera and blackmail you. Like I'll send this to your father. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a million dollars. I'll send this video of you saying ice cream so good to your fucking father. Uh man, I ain't even played no other clips from the movie. Yeah, we just started talking about Makiva Brin's ass and it just got uh, all right, let me play this other scene from when um the main guy when he shows up. Now that that's like the type of shit that you got going on in this movie. Yeah, it's his, just his, one of his one of his many side chicks is sleeping with his parole officer. No, that's his wife. Well, this yeah, one this, his wife. oh yeah, yeah, matter of fact, yeah, this is his wife. This nigga got side families, so this is like his first wife. His first should, should we we can spoil this. Just, just say it's his wife. No, we don't have to spoil that part. We don't have to get into that point. We could just say that no. that's his wife, and um, obviously they're not gonna last. Yeah, but yeah, this movie <clears throat> he played me, and it's yeah, it's a part two to this. Bring me to your city. Is she coming to Philly or New York? Let's see. We don't. She going to Pittsburgh. Like, yeah, she. No, no she's going to <laughs> bug it. She going to Buffalo. She going to she the going second to most popular south. <laughs> Whatever the most popular t- city is in the state, she's going to the second most. Yeah, this is, damn, <laughs> this is the Section Eight tour. She's gonna go, to- <laughs> <laughs> bro. Like Buffalo, Buffalo. Look, cr- you ever been to Buffalo? You you been to Buffalo, Max? I've seen pictures of it. I ain't never been to Buffalo. Yeah. The city I've seen. Like, yeah. No, Buffalo look crazy. Yeah, like I like that's why when you originally when you hear Buffalo, you think it's sweet, but no, nah, Buffalo is it ain't nothing to do out there. It ain't nothing to do like really, but like 
it's not like it's a, a popping like um like downtown scene or something like like or just city life like a Manhattan or Philly. Man. Let me see. No, yeah, that that tour, man. Support her. <laughs> Wait, I'm reading the comment. Somebody said, "Damn, what you scared to come to Chicago?" <laughs> She's gonna go to fucking uh, Peoria. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I can't afford Chicago yet. I can't afford Philly, but if y'all could, if y'all could travel to Harrisburg, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the hole in the wall tour. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to. We we might have to make a road trip. A road trip to to see her. Yeah. She's going to Buffalo. Let's go to Buffalo when she goes to <laughs> Buffalo. Let's meet her we gonna Buffalo. go to Buffalo. I'm gonna get her to sign. I'm gonna get her to sign the. Um, I'm gonna print out. We should make a poster. We should print out like a get paid cover. Or like, or like a Makiva, Makiva like um cutout board. Well, like like <laughs> uh like how they do at WWE. Yeah, where they hold up the sign. I think we could make like. I think we could uh. We should show up and sell bootleg T-shirts over <laughs> at our events. Like before you go and go get it, come get a T-shirt, twenty dollars. I want to, I want to, I want to do one of these movies, dude. Same, right? Yeah, yeah. All you need is a is a, an account, bro. You need a to, password, right? To to upload a movie to Tubi, all you need is Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen some bullshit on there. I mean, but I've also seen some classics. Like when I first looked up on. Um, when I first looked up two B movies, I saw New Jack City. New Jack City was up here. The Mask. There's some good movies up here. There's some good movies up here, man. It's just that he played me. Oh. He played me as a bad movie. He played me as a very bad movie. Um, there's like time skips and shit yeah. in it. Like they'll be in one part of uh, life and then just it'll jump to something entirely different it's kind of crazy but i mean all in all though but lisa brown she does have good good ones though she does have some good flicks it's funny we talking about this one like this one she's not even the main actor in the movie who's the main she's actor? not even in that movie because, <laughs> right, right. she's not even in this I'm, movie i'm just a fan of her work <laughs> but yeah it's, it's totally oh she, she does she, everything she sell clothes too yeah all this stuff is cheap as fuck this is this is all clothes she stole from other sets. <laughs> this this is poorly constructed clothing. All right, let's let's cut this part. I only want to promote the good shit. Let's not tell people about the the clothing brand. Yeah. Her boyfriend gonna shoot us. <laughs> that nigga's gonna come to Poughkeepsie. <laughs> he like if I could make it to the main city, I would. <laughs> Man, I catch you niggas in Pittsburgh. That niggas lucky I can't afford to go to Manhattan. <laughs> Did a bus go out there? Right. She doing a whole tour. She had a tour bus, but everybody else is on it. It's a public Bro, tour bus. These t- she, she, she she going in a Korean church band <laughs> across the country. Oh man, are we bad people? I think we bet we just like I was trying to be positive, but now I just roast the <laughs> career. Oh, right, these uh, he doing this? Doing no, this. I actually like I like DM her and see if she'll send news. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, see, see if we can book her for a show. Yo, these two be actors <laughs> going on tour on a China bus. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, one of these two be actors gonna fuck us up when they get paid. <laughs> we we act like these are famous people. These are really just regular <laughs> niggas that are just Wait, with, find nothing, us. with nothing to lose. Yeah, we be on flyers all throughout the city. They know exactly what date and time we'll be somewhere. <laughs> That's interesting though. Do you ever find that at right. as exposure? Like the fact that yeah, you are committed publicly to being somewhere, so you do have a good list like that. Right. No, no. Yeah, I, no, I've I'm, seen it happen. I'm, I've seen somebody I'm I'm very that's why, like, I'm very mindful of the shit I say for that reason. Because it's like, if somebody could literally just, I'll have a show in the city somewhere at one in the morning. 
Like it, yeah. So I'm very mindful about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, we going we going we gotta make sure they on the road when we go to Detroit. Yeah, if if we if we meet her, we gonna need security because she if she if she finds out about this shit. <laughs> Yeah, her, her boyfriend is gonna fuck us up when he gets out of jail. Hold on, let's save uh, this. Let's save it. No, nah, but I mean, when I go to Detroit, I know, I know where I'm gonna get my nails done. <laughs> That's nice. That is, that is like really nice though. Like, cause you got somebody on set. <laughs> these like these actors, they they act. I mean, she got her own clothes, so you got a stylist, you got a nail tech, a lash tech. You got she she dance, so you got some entertainment in between takes. Somebody, do you think like her or Crystal the doll have management? That's what I. That's a good question. She definitely live with her grandma. <laughs> <laughs> she, she waiting for her grandma and the dad to get the big room. <laughs> oh, oh, this is just like some made up shit. I don't think yeah. this is even real. No, nah, this is definitely made up be, for the fact that she just got some video in a bonnet. Yeah, that's just like yeah. This is a fake website. <laughs> what the fuck is this? We just came up on like a came upon some weird corner of the yeah. internet. Uh. All right, how do we how do we get a, 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 a how do you book a to be actor? Um, you just gotta have an A's of weed. <laughs> you just a trip. Oh, they must be in something new together. All right, yeah. we we totally lost right. the point. Yeah, yeah we, we totally lost did. the point. <laughs> we definitely all right, did. all right, let's uh, we all right. definitely cutting out the last thirty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I'm just I'm just disrespecting this black woman. <laughs> Just For no, <laughs> with no fucking uh, <laughs> pro- provocation, right? Because I, I am a fan of her. I am a fan of her. It, it just, I'm She's really, just too easy of a target. <laughs> That's no, what it is. I'm a fan of these actors. It just pisses me off <laughs> that they have to do so much. Like we need a, we need a two B strike. <laughs> we do. Like we we worried about the actors and the writers. Like the, I was about to say the actual actors. I mean, they are. <laughs> actual actors. They are. But we we need a two be strike because there's no reason that my leading lady should have to do nails on a weekend. Exactly. That is a huge problem. My my the star, bro. Imagine like imagine you go into McDonald's and you see, you see the lead actor, of of like your your favorite six movies you don't watch just on a fries. That's how this shit is. I shouldn't I shouldn't be able to see one of my favorite actors my one of my favorite actors or actresses and say, Hey, like give me a Jack and Coke. <laughs> that's that's true. They need they need to be respected. We we gotta get them out of this. So if y'all can, man, please support. Yeah, when they say black people gotta work twice as hard as white people in an entertainment business to get the same results, this they're is what not they playing. Need. This is what they need, man. Nigga, so. to make it in comedy as a black man, I gotta do comedy. I gotta write. I gotta act. I gotta fuck Adam Twenty Two's wife. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man. If you can, man, please support your local to be actor. Cause we gotta get them out of this, but um, shit. You wanna um, you got anything you wanna plug before we get out of here? Uh, so as we as we wrap this up, um, I just like to remind everybody. I guess we already did the like, subscribe. We don't gotta do that a million times. Mm-hmm. I don't have to. I don't have anything to plug. I, I'm be. I'm be working. So, you know, just remember to follow us on the socials, keep up, uh, stay updated with what they're doing, what we're doing, what the podcast is doing, and, uh, you know, just look out for more episodes, because we're going to keep them coming, you know, 
Yeah. Podcasts don't even podcasts don't even last, man. Like people start this shit up and they just give up. They do. Bro, that's why like is it's cool we about to hit a milestone. We had episode nine. You know they say eighty percent of podcasts end before episode ten. I could see that. I wish more of them would. <laughs> So yeah, man, keep supporting as this thing continues to grow, man. I'm Anthony Moore. I'm Asante Morris. We got Max, we got Pepsi, and this has been another episode of the We Want More podcast, and I'm going to let this music fade out.